Okay guys, very highly anticipated video, uh, 2025. We're coming to the, we're in fall of 2025. I was really hoping to be making this video in late spring, early summer of 2025, but here we are. I waited for the, the sun to hit me directly right into my eyeballs. Uh, so it causes maximum amount of pain on me so that I could do this video with fire. Today we're talking about the new Photon Gen 2. Today I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing a performance test on this. I'm gonna be testing top speed on it and I'm gonna be doing a hill climb test on this. Now if you guys know, I, I have a, a, a hill that I call the, the Widowmaker. It's, it's a crazy steep hill and I'm gonna test this to see how it does. We got a 38 tooth sprocket on here. As you guys know, this motor can handle anywhere from 36 volts to 72 volts. So I've got a 52 volt battery here and I've also got a 72 volt battery behind me that I'm gonna be doing both sets of tests on. Top speed and hill climbing and just kinda of show you guys what, what the difference is. We got the new Intuition display on here too. I wanna to go over this and show you this, this new display and kinda of give you my overall thoughts on the motor. Just uh, after riding around for a few miles, what do I think about it? So I think what's just, what's just first and foremost, let's just get right into the performance test that we, we have something to talk about. Go do the, the top speed test now starting with 52 volt and then we'll do the 72 volt right afterwards. Okay, so you can see the 52 volt had a top speed of 36 miles an hour. 72 volt had a top speed of 37 miles an hour. So what this motor is doing, what this tells me is because the 72 volt battery should be spinning this motor a lot faster. The higher voltage, you, you get a higher motor spinning. What this is doing is it's limiting its amps so that the, the power is the same. In theory, you should still be able to get a little bit more top speed. If we were like in a vacuum, I think at 72 volts, this thing would be getting more a higher top speed. I think what they did is they limited amps so that net wattage is always gonna to top out at 2000, which is what the Grin all axle, we ran into that with them earlier too. So whether you run 52 volt, 36 volt, 72 volt, your watts are always gonna to top out at the same. So you're just limiting that amps. All right, well now let's move on to the, the hill climbing test. Let's see what 52 volt and 72 volt does. Okay, so here you can see it's pretty much the exact same. I didn't really notice a big difference and I made sure I tested it. I checked to make sure that I was in race mode, max power. I had it set to unrestricted mode. I had the power set to max. Both settings have peaked out at 2000 watts. So in 72 volts, you're actually limiting your amps and amps is what's giving you that torque. That's what's giving you that power. So in theory, the 52 volt probably had a little bit of an edge doing that hill climb test. That super high torque stuff that you need to get up. The 52 volt, I think, is drawing more amperage. I wish I had uh, something like Grin has where you could log your ride and it'll show you how many amps you're drawing and, and all that stuff. But unfortunately, the CYC ride control app doesn't support that. You could see in real time, but it's, it's hard to see while you're trying to stay on the bike and all that. So what, what are the trade-offs between like why even offer 72 volt if you're not really able to get get the same amount of amps because i think what a lot of people are going to want is to have that same 35 amp output across 72 volt and 52 volt but i believe this is a still a fairly small motor running 35 amps at 72 volt would send this thing you know closer to 3000 watts that's when you start generating a lot of heat i think this motor is a little bit too small for that so i think they did the smart move by limiting the amps so that you know if you have a another x1 uh, another cyc motor like the x1 pro or something that could run 72 volts and you already have one of those and you want to keep one battery to power multiple systems this is nice i really like that they made the voltage super compatible even if the performance is a little bit limited i'd, I'd rather have this 
And I think this is just gonna add to longevity. And yes, if you're running 72 volts, like if you're just gonna run a 72 volt system on this, it's gonna be more efficient because you're using less amps. More amps just generates more heat, more pressure, it's more force. If you could get the same amount of wattage but using less amps, that's easier on the battery, it's easier on the motor, it's easier pretty much on, on everything. That's why your electrical lines, they use super high voltage and then they step it down to your transformers near your house to a lower voltage that then sends into your house. They're not sending it at such a low voltage across the lines. Super high voltage, lower amps, you're able to send it a long ways without a lot of power loss. Same thing with this, if you run it at 72 volts. So this is, I do like it. There is some wisdom to this. You're not gonna get the same performance. If you're hoping to get crazy performance out of this, you're probably not gonna get it with a 72 volt system, but it's nice that you can. That's my recap. What do I think of my thoughts of this over the Gen 1? It definitely feels more powerful. Just even on 52 volt, it feels more powerful. And I believe it's, it's lighter weight than the Gen 1. I think this one was like, a pound lighter but this one does feel a little bit beefier it it's got different it just the, everything just feels a little bit beefier it's, it's a little bit bigger i like that up here on the display they have motor temperature and controller temperature all at a glance you get a lot of information at a glance which i really like some people are going to be overwhelmed by it but i like it shows you your miles per hour your motor torque and your motor rpm all at all in real time and your pedal assist level the power that you're using in real time, your battery voltage and your battery percentage, and your controller motor temperature gauge, and what uh, mode you're in, whether you're in street or mode, like all this, all at once, and it doesn't feel overwhelming. And you could always change this too. They give you three different scenes to choose from. You could have it a little bit more basic, just your speed, voltage, the date, your pedal assist level and mode, or you could have a little bit more laid out linearly and, and have uh, your cadence. I think it's your, I don't know what the HPWR. Not really quite sure, but there's, there's a decent amount of like heart monitor stuff with this display. So I'm not sure if they're gonna have something tied in where you could measure your heart rate with this. That would be freaking amazing. They had that with the first gen, but nothing ever came to it. So I'm not really quite sure. Again, details are still a little sparse. This is using the CAN bus protocol. So a lot of the old interfaces are not gonna be compatible from Gen 1 to Gen 2, but some of them are. They did say you are gonna be able to use the Gen 1 chain rings with this one, but it's not gonna be backwards compatible. You can't use the new Gen 2s on your old photons. Same thing with your displays. It's gonna have different connections. So you're not gonna be able to reuse some of the stuff. Some of the stuff you can, so if you do have a Gen 1 and you want to upgrade to this, it's not all completely lost. Some of it will be compatible, but yeah, power-wise on this, it felt a little bit more like a BBS HD. It felt like it had a little bit more power than the first Gen Photon. I felt like that one was a little bit gutless. Well, that one was prone to overheating and the Sprag clutch was just really weak on it. And this one, they say, is going to be three times as powerful. Uh, or the Sprag clutch that is, it's gonna be three times as strong. So hopefully people are not gonna be breaking their Sprag clutches or overheating and burning out their controller like that was happening in the first gen. I didn't really see the temperature get too, too hot on this. I think it was like 130 for the motor is what I saw, which is really low. But again, I wasn't really pushing this that hard for super long periods of time. I should probably make another video about that and showing you, you know, long-term reliability on this with, with speed, but I um, thought I would just give you guys just the basics of the performance of it and a brief overview of my thoughts on what they have. I think this is going to be a, a, a real winner. I really do. I think this is a, it's not huge improvements over the, the Gen 1 on paper, but I think the Sprag clutch being stronger and the voltage being 36 to 72, and this is a nice display. I think this display is gonna be probably one of the better sellers. So I do think this, this is a decent upgrade and I think they've got a real winner. So if, if price is not scary for you, these things do clock in at almost $1,000 starting at, that doesn't scare you off. This is gonna be possibly, possibly the new king. As far as value goes, I, I can't say this is gonna be the best value motor, but it is gonna be like the Mercedes. It's, if you're looking for the best motor, I think we got a new king in town. I'm not quite sure if it's the best value, bang for the buck, when you got a lot of other competition out there that is almost out there for a third of the price. But for what you get, the app alone is amazing with this. The best quality build, I would say. So this has a lot going for it. I think this is gonna sell well for 2026. All right, feel free to hit us up with any questions. Um, head to johnnynerdout.com. Check the inventory if you want these. If you got questions about them, call our shop. Go to johnnynerdout.com. We got our phone number listed all there. Yeah.
All right. Appreciate you guys. Thanks.